we're going to do the derivative of uh, integration by parts. It starts off with something we recognize. What's the derivative of u times v? Well, it's u times the derivative of what? Yeah, the derivative of v of x plus what? v times the derivative of u of x. Now, I don't like this clunky notation. I'm going to do it a little shortcut, if you don't mind. The derivative of u times v is u dv plus what? The way I'm doing these shortcuts, v du, correct? So that's just product rule. Nothing new there. You totally get that. We're going to add 3 to both sides. No, let's add um, x to both. No, let's uh, take the square. No, let's not do that. Let's integrate both sides. You can do anything you want as long as you do to both sides. Well, we're going to integrate both sides. And what's the integral of the derivative of u times v? u times v, yep, is equal to the integral of u dv. Got to make my u's different from my v's. Plus the integral of v du. Uh, just for fun, I'm going to algebraically solve for the antiderivative of u dv. And when I get that, I get u times v minus the antiderivative. Because can I just subtract v du to both sides? And you get v du. This is the formula for integration by parts. And that formula isn't one you'll have to memorize, because I'm going to show you a real nifty way involving pirates how to remember it. Okay. And uh, we're going to start right out with a, an example. And then you'll, you'll see how this is applied. First of all, I'm going to take the antiderivative of x cosine x. You think we could use u sub for this? No, because derivative of x is 1. you got extra cosine. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. I don't have a negative sine. So this won't work with traditional means. And it won't work with change the variable either, because we don't have that ability to change this variable with u and cosine. So we're going to utilize this new technique. So the first thing that you're going to have to do is decide what you want u to be. So you could either let u be equal to x or u be equal to cosine x. Which one do you want to pick? Kind of hard to know, isn't it? Creatively, we'll just try it. We'll just try u equal to x. And that will leave dv equal to cosine x. So here's what we're saying. We're saying the antiderivative of x cosine x dx. And then we're going to figure out what this whole thing is equal to. So we're going to first make a little grid, make a 2 by 2 grid, put u of x on the left, du on the right, dv lower left, v on the right. So we're going to have to fill out this grid first. So u of x, I said, was x. What's the derivative of x? 1 dx. So there you go. That's du dv is cosine x. And you don't know it, but there's a dx sitting there. Well, you kind of do. It's right there. OK. What's the antiderivative of cosine? Just sine x. Regular old sine x. Would you go arg for me with your best pirate voice? Ready? Arg. Louder. Arg. Now put more R in it. Arg. That's going to help you remember this technique. Once you have this, you're going to uh, do uh, X marks the spot. 
not real good X, but I'm going to make an X like that. Can you see that in the back? Crazy, I call it crazy X marks the spot. Now, if you looked at the formula, my crazy X works for X sine X is UV minus then my sine X DX is my V DU. Like that. So here it goes. Crazy X marks the spot. X sine X minus um, sine X DX. Could you tell me what the antiderivative of negative sine is? Cosine X. And you're done. There's the derivative. Now, the overachiever in me makes me want to double check to see if this really is the right answer. So I'm going to do a quick little Heidi Ho derivative check. This derivative, the antiderivative, should be X cosine X. So watch what happens. X cosine X uh, plus sine X times derivative of X is 1 minus sine x, because that's the derivative of cosine x. Derivative of, of c is 0. So what happens to sine x minus sine x? What are you left with? Did it work? Perfectly. So there you go. That's integration by parts. Let's try another one. Let's do x e to the x. x e to the x, you're going to pick a u. Can anybody tell me a suggestion for which one you want to be u? I like it. u is good for x because the derivative of x is 1, and I want that to go, the power of x to go down. So I like it. Oops. Excuse me. u is x. Derivative is dx. So that means dv is e to the x. Is that a good idea? It's a great idea because what's the antiderivative of e to the x? e to the x. There's kind of a little dx hidden in that one. So then the antiderivative of e to the x dx is e to the x. Arg. Crazy x marks the spot. And now we're ready to do it. x e to the x minus uh, e to the x dx. Now what is the antiderivative of e to the x? e to the x plus c. And you're done. You did it. Yeah. The x part? This is for looking at my formula. Uh, this is u. This is v. And this is du, and this is dv. So the formula works this way. u times v minus antiderivative of v du. And so can you kind of see how I did that? Yeah, but I was just doing it. It's just a, it's a memory technique. You don't have to use it. You can sub... But here's what I've found. If you go ahead and do all of these u of x equals this, du, dv equals this, v. It's kind of cumbersome. I almost like it organized this way. This was actually in a movie. Have you ever heard of Stand and Deliver? It was made in the 80s about a calculus teacher that saved a town. It's my favorite story. And uh, he uh, saved the town by getting all his students to take AP uh, calc tests down in uh, southern LA. And he, in the movie, had this little grid. It only shows up for a second, but uh, I, I figured it out once, and I've used it ever since. Really great. Does this ever not work? It always works. In fact, what you're really asking is, 